My name is Nikhil Ramesh Puranik. I am from First Gen Mechanical, RNSIT. 2nd May 2011. Something very important about that day. US Special Forces went into Pakistan undetected. They managed to kill Osama bin Laden and they returned without the Pakistanis getting to know. They intruded Pakistani airspace which is protected heavily by radars. Now, how did they do that? We'll get to know. Break a bar. Now, I am going to tell you something about radar absorbent materials which constitutes the basis of stealth technology. Yes. Now, let me come on the basics. How does a radar work? And what is a radar? A radar is a device which sends out electromagnetic waves. And the electromagnetic waves on hitting the object or the aircraft get reflected back to the radar. Now, this information is processed and based on that, we can get to know the presence of an aircraft in the airspace. As this diagram illustrates, the radio waves are sent, they are reflected, the data is processed and the aircraft is detected. Now, by eliminating the reflections in the process, you can make the object kind of invisible to radar. Now, how does this work? It sounds very simple. Just eliminate the reflection part. But it's very complicated. Now, the answer to making the aircraft almost invisible to radar lies in the shaping of the body of the aircraft and the materials which are used to coat the aircraft. Now, let me tell you something about radar cross-section. Radar cross-section is the amount of surface area on the aircraft which can reflect the radio waves back to the station. So now, if you manage to reduce the radar cross-section to a very less extent, that means very little amount of radio waves are being reflected back. So this illustrates the radar cross-section of an aircraft. So now, traditionally, aircraft have a very large radar cross-section as I'm going to show you in the next slide. See, this aircraft, which is a normal size passenger aircraft, it is as big as a normal passenger aircraft, it has a radar cross-section of 125 meters square. And now, to make the aircraft stealthy, you need to bring it down to less than 1 meter square of radar cross-section. So how do you bring it down from 125 to less than 1? Yes. Now look, the Navy cruisers have a radar cross-section of 14,000 meters square. This bicycle has a radar cross-section of 2 square meters. So now how are you going to make an aircraft radar cross-section 0.00001 square meters which has been achieved currently. Now, radar cross-section is reduced by using special angular and specially designed curved surfaces which manage to deflect the radio waves which are sent from the radar. So instead of giving the reflection, the radio waves are deflected towards the sky. So there is no, the reflection is eliminated in that part. So just by this alone, you can eliminate around 80 to 90 percent of the reflections. So the radar cross section is drastically reduced. Now, this is an, uh, one of the earliest examples of stealth technology. The SR-71 Blackbird was a stealth aircraft developed by the US Air Force, which managed to fly over any country it wanted without being detected by any radar of that time that is during the 1960s and the 1970s. As you can see, the design is very futuristic. Any uh, radio waves that were incident on this were immediately deflected and the special reduced uh, reduction techniques. Now, this is radar, it's just a radar absorbent paint, but it is not like a normal paint. It's a very high tech paint made out of carbon composites, ferrite based substances and certain dielectrics which are meant to absorb the radio waves instead of reflecting them. Now, this is very similar to the small dots on the microwave oven door which absorb the microwaves. So that is like the tiniest and the most basic example of this technology because those tiny dots absorb the microwaves coming from the oven and prevent the escape of the microwaves and so the microwaves don't harm us. Now, how does a radar absorbent material work? I told you it's a very high-tech paint made out of ferrite-based substances, carbon composites. Now, I'll tell you how exactly it helps in absorbing the radio waves. A radar sends out the radio waves, 
the radio waves are incident on the aircraft. Now, radio waves are electromagnetic waves. When electromagnetic waves are incident on this paint, I am talking to you specifically about a paint known as iron ball paint because this is the only thing that has been declassified till date. So, iron ball paint uses tiny iron balls along with the various carbon composites in the paint. So, when the electromagnetic waves are incident on the aircraft, it induces tiny oscillations in the iron balls, in the molecules of the iron balls. So, electromagnetic energy is basically converted into heat energy on the impact. So, electromagnetic waves incident on the aircraft, they are converted into heat energy. So, when the aircraft moves forward, the heat is dissipated. So, you are eliminating the reflection here again. So, by, reducing, by making the surface angled and by coating it with radar absorbent paint, you are basically deflecting 90 to 80 percent of the waves and the remaining 10 to 20 percent you are absorbing it. So the aircraft becomes nearly invisible to any form of radar. Now, 100 percent perfect but it is 99.9 .9 percent perfect which is more than enough to practically use it and use it successfully in today's world. Now, under normal conditions, an aircraft can achieve near 100 percent invisibility to radar. So that is why you cannot, they don't appear on most of the radar screens. Now, this is an example of a stealth helicopter which has special angled surfaces. So these special angled surfaces eliminate multiple reflections. So when the radio waves are incident, instead of getting around 100 to 150 reflections, you get only 2 to 3 reflections now. So there, most of the radio waves are eliminated. And now, it's coated with radar absorbent paint. So, the radio waves which are incident on these two surfaces are also absorbed. So, this means that this helicopter can go into any country's airspace virtually undetected. Now, this is the example of an American B-2 bomber which is by far the best stealth aircraft design because it can penetrate any country's airspace anywhere, anytime without being detected and it is mighty expensive as well. It costs 1.2 billion dollars to make. So you can see the amount of stealth technology used in this aircraft. Now, this is an example of a stealth boat. Its principle is different from a stealth aircraft. You, don't, you can't make a boat invisible to radar, but you can make a boat this size appear as a tiny fishing boat. That is the main objective. You see it on the radar screen, a military ship appears as a tiny boat. So that is the advantage of using radar cross-section reduction techniques in ships. Now, as you can see the angled surfaces here, multiple reflections are totally eliminated. So instead of getting several hundred reflections from a ship, you, you hereby get 5 to 10 reflections. So the radar cross section is reduced from 14,000 meters square of a Navy cruiser as I told you to around 100 to 150 meters square. Now, this is an F-22 Raptor which, is, which also is by the Americans and uh, this is the best stealth fighter design because this is also an aircraft which can penetrate any airspace undetected virtually uh, with the modern radar systems available. Now, as I told you, I'll tell you after the break, I'm going to tell you how the Americans did it. The Americans used a very specially designed helicopter for that purpose. They knew Pakistani air airspace was monitored. They knew they had radars and they had to use a very special helicopter which had proper radar absorbent paint and a, a proper radar cross-section reduction design. So, this helicopter was 50 times more expensive than an ordinary helicopter of the same version. I have the picture in the next slide. Yes, as you can see, this is an ordinary S-60 Black Hawk helicopter. As you can just see at the surfaces, when uh, radar radio waves are incident on it, it is going to give back hundreds of reflections. But, this has been modified into this. You get just three to four reflections from the surface and along with the radar absorbent paint it, become, it became nearly invisible to the technology that Pakistan has and so this helicopter managed to penetrate inside and the seals managed to get down and kill Osama bin Laden. So this is how stealth technology helped in eliminating the world's most wanted man. Now I come to the conclusion. Stealth technology is something which has immense scope for improvement. And in the future, we might even see aircraft which are capable of bending light around it and becoming totally invisible to the naked eye. That is just the future scope it has. And then, most of the information I'm telling you about stealth technology 
is old and outdated. But that is just the fact we have to accept because any current information on stealth technology dating back up to 1980s is classified. No one knows and we can just speculate that this might be the material used. When I mentioned iron ball paint used on the SR-71 Blackbird, that is 1960s technology. So that is the only thing that has been declassified and nobody even knows what the exact composition of the iron ball paint is. So basically stealth technology currently is heavily classified and we hope it will be declassified in the future a little more so that we can gain information on what its actual scopes are and how powerful it actually is. Thank you. Iron ball paint, it basically uh, consists of tiny iron balls derived from uh, various iron ores now. Okay, so these iron balls, tiny, very tiny iron balls, they are uh, uh, formatted in a form of tiles. This paint is not just applied like a normal paint. Okay, it is made into thin tiles, uh, iron ball, then uh, various carbon composites are used. So iron ball along with the carbon composites, they are made into form of tiles and attached on the aircraft. Those tiles are not there. Yes, no, those tiles are attached to the aircraft now. But it's actually very delicate. So that is the reason stealth technology is so expensive now. The 50 times more expensive than a normal helicopter because it needs to be serviced after every mission extensively. So after one mission, these tiles, they, have, they suffer from damage due to any uh, environmental factors. Like even if it rains, these tiles suffer from damage. So they have to be replaced after every mission if it is suffering from even little damage and they need extensive maintenance. So that is the reason stealth technology is very expensive and uh, all countries don't use it. The only country which uses today is the US now. In India, that's what we have. We don't have anything. No, like uh, uh, the Russians are trying no, to get... People are putting research into uh, uh, just uh, overcoming these things but uh, no worry about the stealth also. Yes ma'am, ma'am. Ma you can overcome and detect stealth aircraft actually ma'am. Yeah. But there are other methods like detecting its infrared signature. So now the Europeans and Russians... Today, Yes, That's why people are not going into stealth. Yes, so any recent idea uh, what is the technology used today? Uh, ma'am, ma I can tell you one incident, ma'am. Okay, uh, an exercise was held between the US Air Force and various European Air Forces and one information that was declassified by WikiLeaks is that uh, the American stealth aircraft F-22 Raptor, as I told you, it was not detectable on the radar, but the European fighter called as Eurofighter Typhoon it has an infrared sensor called infrared search and track. So it was able to detect the F-22's infrared signature from 100 kilometers away now. So even though they have made, uh, so even though they have made it invisible to radar, now they have to work on reducing its infrared signature by uh, especially designing the engine nozzles and the exit nozzles. Can you just go back a few, few slides? I just show it to you now. Okay. Any idea about um, RCS uh, reduction? How uh. they do it? Is it only by changing the angles or any such things or any any proper technique? Ma'am, the proper technique, the only basic principle is reduce the number of reflections, ma'am. So when you reduce the number of reflections, you are getting less radiation. So instead of uh, uh, exposing an entire surface like this, uh, what can I give as an example? Okay, ma'am, take this lamp as an example, ma'am. So it has lots of tiny curved surfaces and tiny angled surfaces. So when, when you shine a radio beam on it, it gives back multiple reflections. But whereas if you have just one flat surface like this, it just gives back one reflection. So it all depends on how big it appears on the radar screen ma'am. Because now modern day radars are pretty limited unless you use special radars like uh, active electronically scanning array radars uh, which generate uh, all types of radio frequencies at once. So these radars have an advantage over stealth technology because stealth technology is effective only against one particular range of frequencies. So once you exceed that range, you can detect a stealth aircraft, as the Russians had done it, ma'am, in 1991. What is that range of frequencies? Uh, ma'am, the, the range of frequencies, uh, one thing is the X-band, ma'am. So, in the, the X-band is the like uh, is like the upper limit, and the uh, lo lower limit is in the range of few kilohertz, actually. So, uh, in that range, it can detect, and uh, AES radars can generate frequencies beyond that. So, normal radars are confined to just one small range of frequencies. But AES radars, they have uh, tiny uh, transmitters in each five segment. So they can uh, produce a much broader range of frequencies. So hereby, they help in somewhat countering stealth technology, as they are detected in 1991. Russians had managed to detect a stealth aircraft, and they even shot it down. Uh, the Russians exactly hadn't shot it down. 
the, using Russian technology, the Serbians had shot it down now. So it has its tiny limitations and one uh, major thing is it is not very effective if it gets wet. Because when it gets wet, the reflection, the water produces reflections. Any other questions? Any questions from the audience?